We start off with some of the light bright or glow bright fluorescent orange and just like on the other fripple pattern that's going to start down here at the butt section and you don't need that many wraps it's just meant to be a little quick hot spot and immediately whip finish that And we got our light olive UTC 70. I'm going to start that right here at the thorax area. And then we're going to use Sulky Hollow Shimmer in a green color for the ribbing. Now, with this UTC thread, if you rotate it, counterclockwise it will flatten it again because as we've made our wraps it tends to wind it up into a rope and then we go back up to that thorax and then you may want to build up a little bit of a taper here because this is just thread body as far as the material goes and then we take the ribbing and just work our way up Okay, once I've got the ribbing tied off, one of the things that you want to do sometimes, because this, uh, any tinsel that sometimes can have a, a tendency to come unraveled, so I'm just going to throw a half hitch into that, and that will keep it from becoming loose, and that whole ribbing would come off. Now that we've got the body built, we're going to take some Clear Cure Goo Hydro, and this is just going to give us some durability. Again, this uh, tinsel is not very durable and this will help reinforce that. Zap it. Now what I want to do is position the thread roughly halfway between the point and the eye. And I'm going to take some foam. This is Ray, Rainey's Evisote, eighth of an inch. And I want just about as much as will fit there in that gap. Not like this, but more at an angle like that. And I'm going to set that down angling it a little bit towards me so that way the torque tends to bring that foam on top of the hook and then successively tighter wraps to nail that down. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put in our wings and what I like to do on this fly is I like to tie the wings in a little bit behind where I'm going to tie the post and the other uh, uh, and the hackle in it's just spreading out a little bit of uh, uh, the materials that will help this float rather than have everything in one clump together. So I'm going to grab some uh, uh, medallion sheeting and it's about the same width, a little bit wider than the foam, but uh, again just something in that hook gap range there. And you just take that, split the difference, and then give it a couple of whirls. Okay, now I'll take my wings and right at that joint, I'm going to situate those in the foam, yank down, something like that. And now I'm going to figure eight a couple of wraps here and this will help secure those wings. And you want to get that pretty tight. And once we've done that, I like to bring and tug the wings down. That way they're flared straight out. And then I just go ahead and trim them to give a little bit more of a wing shape. So it's looking something like that right there with the wing shape. And these wings actually hold their shape pretty good and they really do aid in flotation because it creates some surface area. Now one little trick that I use on this is I'm going to put some super glue right down in the, the joint where those wings and the foam come in. Just gives it a little bit more durability and it'll help it to stay in place, especially after a few fish. 
Now I'm going to work my thread forward and you want to go halfway between the eye of the hook and where the tie-in point for the wings were. Once I'm at that point, I'm going to pull the foam down and just come on top and do the same thing like I did last time. First wrap, second wrap, tighter. Now I'm going to just trim both of these pieces of foam here. The back piece you want to, I, I usually trim it in a, just a flat trim right there. And then the front piece, somewhat similar. And then I want to taper that off because the heads are, are, are not that bulky. Okay, so the, uh, the post area is going to consist of basically some deer hair and some hackle. So what I've got is some deer hair. This is body hair and it's dyed green. Okay, you don't want to use too much of this, but you want to use enough to, to get the fly to float a little better. So I'm usually doing about as much as that foam is wide. And now I'm going to cut and stack it. Remember to comb out the under fur. Okay, we've got the tips aligned. And what I want to do is measure off enough hair about to the end of the hook. Give myself a little bit of room. Transfer that over. And then I just want to tie that in. A couple of loose wraps and then tighten it. And then maintain a hold of this one here. Give that a few wraps. Now I'm going to gather these pieces and trim them. All right, once they're trimmed, I'm going to go ahead and pull back and I'm going to work a couple of wraps of thread back over the wing. This is going to create a little area for my hackle that I can tie onto. And this is just some green dyed grizzly hackle. Tie it in with the uh, pointy side facing you, or the, the V towards you. Okay, now I'm going to give this a few wraps. And then I'm going to work my thread in to tie that off. Snip that off. Now I'm just going to whip finish right here. You just want to be careful not to bind down a ton of these fibers, but it will actually work through the, the hackle quite nicely. And I try to cut that off on the bottom because I'm going to trim this anyway. Okay, now I've got a bushy mess down there. I don't want these... I want this to to sit flat on the water. So I'm going to go ahead and just trim the underside of the hackle so that it will sit flush. So what will happen is that this part of the fly will sit up on the surface. The butt will hang down and I think that's part of its effectiveness. I mean th this pattern is is really really fishing well. So that's all it is right there. Trimmed it up and that's our Fripple Drake.